In this video, we're going to expand the program we wrote in the previous video to show off a few more things that you can do with Java and to get a little bit of understanding about how methods work and how programs are actually run. So to start out with, I'm going to take this output window and move it over here. And just to refresh your memory, we're going to run this program. This is basically just a one-line program. This line right here is all we had to add. And after we click this button to run it, we end up with that text, hello world, printed out over here. Now, I say printed out because that's what the name of that thing is, but obviously there's no paper involved. By printing, we just mean show in this output window over here on the right in my case. So first we're going to make a change. We're going to copy this first line and make a second line. And we're going to change what it actually shows. So I'm going to say start and end. And we're going to go up to the green button again and run it. And this kind of makes sense. It printed out two lines instead of just one. So it printed out these two lines because we told it to print out two lines over here. So that should sort of make sense. At a higher level, to understand what's sort of going on, when a program runs, it's going to execute the statements in the program in the order the programmer tells it to. So let me break down what that sentence means. By execute a statement, I mean do what happens, or do what the programmer says. So these two lines are executed one at a time. It prints start, then it prints end. To build a more interesting program, you need to be able to organize, the, organize these statements into blocks and components, because a large program can have a very large number of these statements or lines of code so we need some tools to help group them together such that things can be a little bit easy to read and make sense. So the, the basic building block is what's called a method, which is just sort of a grouping of these lines of code. So I'm going to define a new method here. And you can ignore those first three lines for right now. But to create a method, you have to give it a name. I'm going to call this one my first method. And then you need some parentheses, which you can ignore for right now. And then an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. So I'm going to spread those out to leave a blank line here. And then run this, line of, run this program again. So it runs just fine. I haven't introduced any errors into the program. But now you can see that nothing changed because I never actually told the program to use this method. All I've done here is create it. I haven't actually started using it. So if I even put a print line in here, and I run the program again, you can see that the output over here does not change because, as I just said, I've already, or I've created a new method, but I'm not actually using it. So let's go ahead and use it. So what I'm doing right here is calling my first method. So we have the definition of the method right here. But then when we want to actually use it, we have to call it like that. So it's important to keep those two ideas separate. Let's go ahead and run it again. And you can see this time it printed out start in my first method and then end. So what happened when the program runs, it executes this line, which prints out start. And then it executes this line, which makes the program jump down here. And after this line is run, 
the program returns back to right here. And then it prints out end, and the program is done. So you could put in another call. and run that and you would see that it would do start and then my first method and then end and then back to my first method so once you create a method you can call it as many times as you want you can even have it call other methods so I'm going to create my second method right here We can call it just like this. And so you see the start, my first method, my second method, and then end. So to make this a little bit more complicated, you can even have methods call other methods. So you could call my second method from right here. And so think for a second about what this is going to print out it's going to do start and then it's going to call my first method and the program will jump down to right here and then it will print out in my first method and then it will jump to my second method and print out in my second method and then return to my first method and then return to main and print out end and then exit so if we go ahead and run this, let's see what happens. So just like we expected, it went to start my first method, my second method, and then end. So to make this a little bit more clear, let's put some more print lines into my first method. I'm going to call this entering and leaving. So, and just to make this even more clear, I'm going to put some spaces in here so we can see it. So, run this again. It does start entering my first method and my second method leaving my first method and then end. So it corresponds just to what we've written in the code and what we've told it to do. You have a start, then it jumps to my first method, says it's entering, jumps to my second method, says it's in the second method, then returns back to my first method and leaves that, and then returns back to here and prints out end. Okay, so that's a little bit about methods and how they work in the next video, we'll get into even more stuff that you can do with Java.